New cars are generally better than old ones. I mean, how else would you convince people to buy them? But there are a couple of models that are exceptions to this rule. Hey everyone, I'm Stipe, and these are seven car models that are worse than before. Let's go. Number seven. Ever since the first generation Boxster, which saved force from bankruptcy, these entry-level roadsters and later coupes had a flat six stuck right in the middle. They were awesome. But in 2017, with the arrival of the fourth generation, six cylinders were dropped completely in favor of turbo fours. Miraculously, these new smaller engines produced even more power and made the car drive better due to reduced weight. But something was missing the theatrical noise. Everyone complained about it. The rattling four pots sounded unpleasant, which made the car feel cheaper. It felt less upmarket and less sophisticated. And these are not words you want associated with your shiny new Porsche. I don't care if the 2019 Cayman is better because the numbers say so. These are not track day cars where everything has to be sacrificed in order to get faster lap times. No, these are fun cars. Who cares if the cornering speed is increased by 8% or acceleration cut down by 15%? Are you having a bigger smile? People said no. Good thing is, is that the top shelf GT4 and GTS models still have the flat six, but the regular ones will probably remain joyless forever. Number six. I don't need to spend too much time introducing the Charger. It's the big boy muscle car with big engine and big power. How much power? More than any supercar in the world. Too bad about that oil crisis, huh? For some political reasons, fuel got really expensive in the US and that spelled doom for all muscle cars. Facing death or starvation, Dodge chose death. Unlike the Corvette. But the Charger name was eventually brought back and it was on a four-cylinder front-wheel drive compact car from 1982. Sure, Carroll Shelby made it go like hell with 178 horsepower, but it was still a far cry from the big boy it used to be. Today, we now have the new Charger, and I'm still not perfectly happy. Yes, it's a great car, and the wide-body Hellcat oozes with menacing vibes, but I feel like the Charger name was used just for the marketing. Don't believe me? Look at what they did when they brought back the Daytona. No wing, no nose cone, just some stickers. Just the marketing. And are we gonna ignore the fact that the Charger is a four-door saloon now? If it was me, the resurrected Challenger would be the new Charger. And the four-door, well, let's just give it a new name, like Dodge Brute or something. Yeah. Number five. Not to say that the Subaru Warrior is bad, but throughout the years, it simply got less and less impressive. First generation was legendary. Born from the rough world of rallying and boosting more power than Japan would allow meant that this thing could keep up with the best of the best no matter the surface. It was so popular that the special 22B edition was sold out within 30 minutes. And then the bug-eyed second gen came out. It was so ugly, Subaru facelifted it twice. Looks aside, it was also heavier and in many markets, thanks to the new emission standards, less powerful as well. Plus the two-door version was gone third generation came out as a hatchback only. A hatchback... Oh. Hold on. Fast Impresses used to battle it out with the NSX supercar, and now it's just a hot hatchback? Mind you, it was an impressive one, but it didn't look like an STI, not without the iconic wing anyway. Those came out later with the sedan, but many hearts had already been broken. And now the latest one. On paper, it's the best, but also it's very outdated. The engine is almost the same as it was back in 1989. It's very thirsty, spews out more CO2 than the new Carrera, and it doesn't make much more power than it used to. Comparing it to the NSX again? Forget about it. But the problem is you can't compare it to some hot hatchbacks either. Number 4 Praise the SL73 with a Zonda engine as much as you want. I still think the convertible Merc peaked with the R230 generation. When it came out, this glamorous, comfortable, safe, and fast SL was the best Grand Tourer on the market easily. It was the ultimate two-in-one car. Because of the foldable hardtop, it could be a coupe or convertible. Design was both elegant and seducing, and it was by far the best-looking Merc of the generation. But it stayed around for too long, and by the time it was facelifted, Mercedes' design language became all edgy and squared off. It just didn't fit the smooth and rounded body. Still, it was far better than the next model. 
Although they say it was all new, it looked pretty much like the old one except for the headlights taken from the new A-Class. They didn't fit, they were ugly, and once again, it felt more like a forced facelift to get up to date with new design direction. Four years later, there was yet another forced facelift. Another one. Which was its final nail in the coffin. It still looked dated and desperate, especially next to its fresh new competition, some of which came from Mercedes themselves. Who'd want to buy this try-hard 20-year-old car when these two brand new models are all the rage now? Number 3 Another car that came out of the WRC, except now we're talking about the most successful rally car ever in the history of ever. So show some respect, damn it. The Lancia Delta started out as a very unassuming city hatchback, but with the addition of four-wheel drive, turbocharging, beefier suspension, and a very mean-looking wide body kit, the car evolved into what everyone else thinks of when you say the Lancia Delta. Sadly, by the time the successor was introduced, Lancia withdrew out of rallying for good, and it shows. There was no four-wheel drive anymore. The sportiest version topped out at 193 horsepower, which is less than the previous car, and the styling was, well, it was worse. The old car used to look like a hatchback muscle car, whereas the new one is just a busy mess. Six years later, the Delta was dead, but then, in 2008, Chrysler brought it back. Sure, it did look nice, but it was also clear that any magic of the old Bruiser was completely gone. Look at it. It's huge, bulbous, but also elegant with shiny chrome details. And this time around, there was no hot version at all. You could have a powerful diesel or twin turbo petrol engine, but that alone doesn't make it a worthy successor to this. Number 2 Eclipse was an affordable little coupe with sharp lines and a 195 horsepower four-cylinder turbo engine called the 4G63T. Yes, the very same one found in its legendary brother where it develops 300 horses, or even more if you pogo with a stick. So the tuning potential on the Eclipse was huge. Better yet, if you go for the GSX model, you could get the four-wheel drive system, again, from the Evo, which makes the GSX a two-door Evo, really. And let me tell you, youngsters who don't care much about practicality loved it. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm, so good. But good things can't last. So when the third gen came out, all that was good was stripped away. The four-wheel drive was gone, and so was the turbo. The fastest model had a heavier V6 this time around, and it didn't bring any more power than before. The suspension was also tuned more for comfort than cornering. It was an airdresser's car. For the fourth gen, Mitsubishi's rally art team prepared a concept with the Evo's engine, all-wheel drive, and an aggressive body that clearly mimicked the second-generation GSX. I mean, look at these lines. Return of the Legend? Yeah, no. Nah. Mitsubishi scrapped that and doubled down with an even larger V6 and still front-wheel drive only. Well, shit. And now, Eclipse is an SUV. Number 1 Audi S5 was a proper man's car. A cold muscle coupe with a brawny V8 engine taken from a supercar. Yes, it was detuned because of the hierarchy, but it was still full of testosterone. Basically, S5 was a car Jason Statham would drive in one of his movies. Too bad that the cool factor didn't last long. Audi buyers are generally older and with kids, so a more practical four-door variant was soon introduced, and that one outsold the coupe and convertible combined. I mean, I can understand why. More practicality is always better, but it's diluting the bad boy charisma of this hairy-chested car. Things were even worse with the next generation when the S5 got a turbocharged V6. Sure, it was more modern and faster than before, but that's not the point. This is a car for Jason Statham. It needs to growl. But the worst was yet to come. Diesel. In Europe since 2019, S5 is offered as a diesel only. Yes, it's still fast and it uses less fuel, but diesel engines sound like that Kazakh news anchor. So there you have it. From a muscle car V8 coupe down to a diesel four-door family car. Man, how the mighty S5 has fallen. Now let's add three more cars that were worse than before. Can you recognize these? Can you recognize them? 
write in the comments or check out this other video about the most disappointing cars ever. I'll see you there. Cut!